Welcome back. <laughs> um, OG stands for, uh, amongst others, uh, Open Games. Um, this is basically a collaboration between uh, Short, who implemented a large, well, I would say mo took my uh, crappy prototype and then did all the nice stuff with it, like drawing the wires and fixing the type checker and everything. Uh, and Jules, who's uh, sitting over there, is one of the co-inventors of this uh, compositional game theory stuff. Uh, Jules wrote the backend in Haskell. And because it's category theory, we figured, okay, let's see if we can take these morphisms, which actually describe game games, like uh, the prisoner's dilemma and this kind of stuff, um, and actually use it to drive his uh, implementation in Haskell that actually is, contains an equilibrium checker. So this is how uh, these games are drawn in Jules' language. And this is almost monoidal categories, except it has some extra stuff. So it has this dot thingy here. And a box with no wires on the left is actually drawn as um, uh, this shape. Tri uh, yeah, triangle, <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and it has these letters, so uh, N, S, B, U, universe or environment. But um, we'll get to the, in the second part of the presentation, this will be explained what this means. And so this is that thing in our editor. But, I mean, I could show you the web version, but, 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 much more cool is actually I show you the VS Code extension, which was also sort of patched up during uh, the hackathon. So this is uh, your regular Visual Studio code, but hold on, what's that? There's a state box extension. So I can view this thing as the uh, monoidal diagram. And it doesn't really like it at the moment because, but if I type in here, you will see the editor on your right hand side. Right, so this is very nice because now suddenly I can actually git commit uh, these changes and do all the stuff. So uh, open your terminal, I mean, it's Visual Studio Code, like integrated terminal, whatever. So this is the game. Uh, it's called the Lemon Market uh, in here. And so you can see it over here um, with the wires. All right, so this is, it's the same, uh, sorry, I wanna go back. Go back. So this and this, it's the same thing. So the N is a, here it is a, it's a triangle. Here it's a square. <laughs> here it's a dot. Here it's an X. This dot, this Y, this S, this one. And one of the things actually in uh, Jules' paradigm, the categories they use, they, they have arrows moving backwards. We didn't have that, so we had to kind of hack that in. So that's, that's also happening here. Um, so the second, oh yeah, so now we need to generate Haskell code from this diagram. So now we're gonna make it concrete, so we're gonna give it the semantics. And here you can see the semantics in another Visual Studio code. So this is, this is Jules' uh, ha uh, Haskell code. Um, and so actually in here, this part, well, this part, you can see that this is actually where the diagram happens because <laughs> it's a very long line. Right? So this is, this is how you would actually write it in text. This is exactly the same thing as the diagram. So in this editor, this is uh, what Shoot implemented. We generate this bit of Haskell code. So this is sort of the Haskell speak for the diagram applied to open games, all right? And this is then substituted um, in here. So we did that substitution and, um, and then we can actually run it. And this is where we switch to the second part of the presentation. So we're gonna have uh, Jules Hedges and Philip Zahn actually present this part. So. I'm gonna wire up Philip. Philip is gonna explain to you what the lemon game actually is uh, and do some of the type. There you go. And Thanks. I'm gonna take Jules' laptop and I'm gonna actually.
Yeah, you actually got this inside here. Yeah. Yeah. But we also think it's very nice that you have to buy it. So, uh, I mean, it would be a mod uh, thing if there wasn't uh, at least uh, some white work. So, diagram, image, wine, <laughs> your hook up. Water. Jules can do uh, you can run the code. Yeah. All right, so thanks. This is uh, an improvisation between Jules and me. Um, so when I arrived here in Berlin this afternoon, the uh, thing about open games was still here. And then I learned actually it's now moved here. So for me, it was still a thing we do on a whiteboard, which is very impractical. Um, so we really, really made a, uh, a jump. So I will do two things. I will give you a bit of an interpretation of what this beastie actually is. And then we will move on to the engine that Jules came up with some weeks ago and, well, try to explain, try to show what you can do with it. Before I do that, um, do you, who knows some game theory? Okay, well, that's, that's good. Okay, so this is a game. It's a representation of, well, one version, one very simple version of a very classical game. And the situation is the following. We have two important players. We have a seller and we have a buyer, okay? The idea is the seller, now this could be me, I'm owning a used car and I want to sell it to Jules, right? And what I do is, um, the structure of the game or of the, this interaction that we want to model is the following. I'm setting a price, Jules will observe that price, and then he can say, well, yeah, I want to buy it or not buy it, okay? And this information flow that I roughly described is featured here. So this is, this is the seller. The seller observes something, I will say something about this in a minute. He offers a price to Jules, Jules this is copied. Jules observes, observes, observes it here, he's the buyer, he makes a decision to buy or not, okay? Um, we have, as Yella mentioned, we have some stuff coming back because um, this is floating back. You can also see this here, flowing back. So this is the payoff and of course, you know, we want to think about is this worthwhile to sell or not? So we need to, you know, we need some profit. I, I, at the end, I want to have some money back, right? Now, um, what is, no, no. <laughs> No? I was going to show you the That's good. No? <laughs> Let's do this first. So the important part, I didn't explain this here. This is a, basically a trick from economic game theory. We are introducing what is called the nature. And the nature has been drawing, before everything starts here, has drawn whether this is a good car or a bad car. Right? And we say, you know, there are only two types, bad cars, good cars. And here's the trick. That would be boring if Jules and I would both know this, whether it's a good car or not. We do the following. I observe that because I've been, dry, I've been riding my car for two years and I know whether it's a good car or not, but Jules doesn't know. He will just observe the price that I'm charging. Okay? That makes it interesting because I may have an incentive to say, well, this is a very, very good car. That's the best car you ever saw. And Jules, being still not a very good game theorist, he will say, oh, that's nice. And of course, he will figure out that after one week, the car breaks down. Okay? So as I said, this is a very famous model. It's a, well, not exactly the model that was introduced some years ago, but it's a version of it. All right. Questions to this structure? Why is the key going to be used? This here yeah. is an object which calculates.
plus the lemon price minus the lemon valuation and the quality. And then if, I don't, you know, if there is no trade, I basically get zero. For the buyer, it's just if, if I buy it and I get it, then I get, well, the valuation of this good, which is something uh, quality minus the price I have to pay for it. It's very simple. You could easily change that, but that's not, that's not key. Okay, now we should move on and we should ask, we should fire up the console and ask what kind of strategy do I have to supply? Um, let's move to that first and then go back. Okay. Type check. Type check time. Okay, here's a first question that you can ask. What information do I have to supply? And here's some, we get basically some help by the type checker here, wow. or by myself. <laughs> I have a wonderful back. <laughs> okay, what you can see here is basically, um, you, let me step back. So what you can see is that this guy here, this first element is the thing that the buyer has to, the seller has to, has to supply. He's having to set a price. I assume here, we assume here for simplicity, there are just two prices, low or high. Again, simplicity. Now what he does observe is, I observe, if I'm the seller, I observe the quality. I know it's a good car or bad car. And for each of these cases, I have to determine what kind of price am I charging, right? What does this, the buyer have to do? The buyer has, well, the buyer will face the price um, here. And then he has to supply for each price that he can observe. He has to supply whether he wants to buy or doesn't want to buy. All right, let's move on to some exemplary strategies here. So by the way, this is already important. In the simple, maybe I should say this, in the simple case here, this type checker is, you know, may think like this is obvious, but once you make the game more complicated, that's actually very, very useful <laughs> already. Okay. Okay, here are some strategies. In fact, two pairs of strategies for the seller and the, bu the buyer. <clears throat> so in this case, I guess most of you can read this. It's pretty, pretty simple. I'm thinking, you know what, I will always charge a high price independently of the quality that I observe. So when I, whatever car I get, whatever shitty car I get in the end, I will just say, well, give me a high price, right? And Jules is looking at that and says, well, for all cases, for whatever, whatever Philip tells me, I'm not trusting him, I'm just saying, well, don't buy. I'm not buying that, okay? And then we have the other version down here with this prime. This is, I'm still charging a high price for all cases, but now Jules is saying, well, actually, you know what, I will buy in all cases. Now we're interested in, um, do these strategies actually make sense? Are they compatible? So is it like, when I do this, and Jules does this, is this actually, are there ways to improve? Could I improve or could Jules improve? That's a definition in, in loose words of Nash equilibrium. And the engine we have has this capability of checking internally when we supply strategies, whether yes, you are in an equilibrium, or no, you're not, and then it gives us some output and says us, where should you deviate? Okay? <laughs> no, don't look at me. <laughs> strategy seller, strategy, yeah. Okay, so let me explain what is going on. These are the strategies I characterized before. I'm always selling the high price. He's, he's always saying, no, I don't want to buy. And what we, out, what we get out is an empty list, and this tells us, well, there is an equilibrium, and this equilibrium is a bit of, well, has some not so nice properties, because we are basically never observing any trade, <coughs> right? There will be no trade. And no, this is, not a, this is no, no new result, it's well known. And it's, a, it's one of the problems that if you have, if there is bad quality in a market, it can just happen that the market breaks down, all right? Now, I made an implicit assumption. There is a distribution of types of good cars, bad cars, I didn't tell you. So the assumption here is that there are 20% bad cars, 80%, sorry, 20% good cars, 80% bad cars, cars. Let's change that. Um, and do here 11. Make me recompile it, like? No, okay, not, not, okay, let's not go there. I can do it, I can do it. Let's go back first. <laughs> Sorry, let's go back first and show that it actually spits out uh, also non equilibrium. Yeah. So test this with the, with the wrong, exactly, with the prime. This should not be an equilibrium. And indeed it's not, it tells us. And what you get here is kind of a lot of information. Um, bottom line of that is, it tells us who of these players has an incentive to deviate 
and to what action it should act, he should actually or she should actually deviate. Okay. Good. Count, that's a counter example. Yeah, it's yeah. like a model checker model basically. Checker. Yeah. Okay. Um, we can stop here or do one more. Okay. So what we are doing now, we are changing basically the initial distribution. So I said before, there are more bad cars than good cars. Let's make it, there are many, many good cars and very few bad cars in that market. Okay, and now let's test again this other strategy that we had before, whether this is an equilibrium. Yeah, and it's not now. And the reason here is simple. In a market where there are many good cars and very few bad cars, even so, I know, well, with some probability he has a, uh, if he knows with some probability I will sell him a bad car. On average, he still makes a bargain, right? So let's look at the other strategy where he's always buying and I'm still charging the high price. And we see this is an equilibrium, okay? Um, let me end with one thing. So one week ago, I was giving a presentation to economists just on that basis here. We had to choose basically hacked an intermediate version, command line version to get this nasty uh, uh, open game inside the engine. And I presented it and what they, there was one guy who said, well, wow, this is really cool, but I will never be able to use it, right? Uh, and I told them, oh, well, there are people working on it. In the distant future, we will have a graphical editor. Uh, turns out that was five or six days. So we are all very happy that now we have a good tool to work with. Thanks. <laughs>